Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel, Home with Kimberly. I am excited to have you with me in my kitchen tonight because I am finally going to make this pesto twist bread that I have been wanting to make for, I don't know, probably a couple of years now. Um, and there are a ton of different recipes for this. You can find them on Pinterest, online, on other YouTube channels. I actually am inspired to do mine um, the way I'm going to do it based on what I had watched the needy homesteader do a couple of years back and I will link her original video down below. So since I am making a yummy pasta dinner tonight, I thought this is a perfect opportunity to make this bread. So let's go ahead and get started. Of course you could do this in a mixer if you had a KitchenAid or a Bosch or something to make this go even easier, but I currently do not have one so I'm going to do it in my bowl. However, I would highly recommend if you do not have a mixer to do it in, you're doing it in a bowl, get yourself a dough whisk. This is a game changer. I got this uh, for Christmas as a Christmas gift. They're not very expensive and it makes bread making so much easier. And I'll link it down below um, if you guys are interested in trying to find one. So to our bowl, we are going to add two teaspoons of instant yeast. and one and a half cups of warm water. And because we're doing an instant yeast recipe, I'm not gonna sit here and wait for this to proof. I'm just gonna start adding everything in together. We need to add two tablespoons of sugar. One, two, now four cups of bread flour. I'm getting low on my bread flour. So I'm probably gonna have to use some regular white flour. We'll see. Oops. One, two, three, maybe. Oh, got just enough. Four. We need to add in two tablespoons of powdered milk. One, two, one teaspoon of salt. There's one teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of salted butter. I went ahead and kind of melted mine down in the microwave. And then it's, it's optional if you want to add any additional herbs, and I do. I'm going to add in about a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. And I just want to add in a little additional Parmesan cheese. About a teaspoon or so. So now, the fun part, we are just gonna get this all mixed up, incorporated really well. Get this into a nice dough ball that we can put out on the counter in need. And I can already tell. So, you know, when you're bread making, I have learned every, um, every kitchen's different, the humidity within the room, all of that stuff. So it can vary a little bit from what your recipe says. So this recipe said about a cup and a half of water, which I did, but I can already tell this is a little too dry. So I'm gonna add a little bit more warm water. Add a little bit at a time. Until we can get this to really come together. It smells good. You can smell that Italian seasoning already. All right, this is already looking better. Just gonna add a touch more water. And now I am going to get this out onto my counter. Okay, so my counter is very clean. I just washed it, my hands are clean. I'm gonna put a little bit of flour down just so it doesn't stick. I'm 
going to get our dough out. Our dough. Get some more a little flour on my hands. And I am going to work on kneading this. I'll keep adding a little bit more dough in my hands if it feels a little too tacky. And I'm just going to keep kneading this until it turns into a really nice smooth ball. That's what I'm going for. That's not really tacky or too tacky. It might be a, a little bit, but I'm going to add just a touch more flour. I can tell this is starting to come together nicely. So I'm just going to keep kneading this for, I don't know, maybe five more minutes or so. Just to make sure this is all really well incorporated. And it's a nice smooth ball. And I'll bring you back once I'm finished and let you see what this looks like when I'm done with the kneading process. Okay, so this is feeling good to me. It feels pretty smooth. It's really not sticky at this point. So now, just kind of shape it and, you know, into a nice ball, which it's already pretty much there. Then we're gonna get our bowl and add some oil to that bowl. I'm gonna use the original bowl that I mixed in. So I'll bring my bowl, I'm not worried about getting it completely clean. I cleaned off some of the rough stuff off the sides. Not a big deal. And we are going to throw our dough ball down in there. Get that nice and oiled on both sides. And now I am going to cover this with plastic wrap. I'm going to put mine in my oven with the oven light on and let this rise for an hour. It should about double in size, and then we will come back and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. Okay, you can see my bread has risen beautifully. It smells so good. So what I'm gonna do now is put this out on my counter, and actually, I'm gonna get my rolling pin out just to maybe kind of help me get this rolled out a little bit more. I do already have my greased bread pan waiting. Uh, I kind of wish I had a bigger bread pan than this, but this is the size that I have, so we're gonna see if we can make it work. So I'm gonna get this out on the counter here. You know what, actually, <laughs> you know what I'm supposed to do before I even do that and start rolling it out, I need to punch this down get these air bubbles out first. There, now we can get it out on the counter. And we are gonna start pressing this out. I wanna get this into a nice square shape. Maybe I won't use my rolling pin. We'll see if I even really need it or not. Into a nice little square shape here. And you can use your bread pan as a guide to kind of see how far, how thick, or how wide you need to press it out here. Um, I'm gonna probably make mine longer 
because I can't go out too wide on the sides because this bread pan isn't that wide. So I'll kind of make it to where it's longer this way. If you had one of those Pullman bread pans, that would be really nice. Let's put this in, but we'll work with what we've got here. Perfect. This looks so pretty. It smells so good. Okay, what I'm going to do now, so I bought both of these pestos, if you remember my grocery haul. I think I got these from Aldi's, I believe. Maybe. Aldi's or Walmart, I can't remember, but I want to use both of these. And you know, this would be a perfect recipe to make at Christmas time with the red and green. So I'm going to do different rows here. Kind of mix this up a little bit. There's a lot of oil in there sitting at the top. So I'm giving this a little bit of a stir. So I'm just going to go down the line here like so. And I don't want to get this real close to the edges if I can help it because it makes it a little more difficult to seal it up when you need to seal it. And typically what you would do um, if you're making a pesto bread, you do like a lot of people just do the green pesto, but I saw a needy homesteader do it this way with the red and green and I loved, loved how she did that. I love the idea of the uh, different flavors and the different colors. So that's what I'm gonna do it like she did. So we just do it like this and then we're just gonna spread this out. And like I said, I'm not gonna try to get too close to the edge. I mean, it's fine. It's probably gonna be, it's gonna be messy. It was messy when she was doing it, rolling up. But I'm trying to make it to where it's a maybe a little easier to seal at the end. So we are going to spread that out, spread the green out. Now, if you just did one or the other, the regular green pesto or wanted to do red, I mean, you could just spread, you know, whatever you're using out over the entire thing, but we're just doing this with two different types. So that's why I'm lining them up and spreading them out this way. And that one can kind of overlap more. It's fine. Okay, so now we move these pestos out of the way. We are going to start rolling this up. Start at the end here and just kind of as tightly as you can. Start rolling it. You almost have to kind of pick it up a little bit too as you're going keep rolling it and kind of, you know, pulling that, tucking under as you go, pick it up, tuck it under a little bit, just so you're not, because as you're rolling, this wants to all keep spreading that way. So if you kind of pull it and tuck it as you're rolling, I think that helps. Now, what I'm going to do, let me move my camera a little bit. Now I am going to bring this part up start pinching this together. Bring that up, start sealing that. Sealing that. And it's okay if it does want to come apart on you a little bit. It might do that, but we'll deal with that in a moment. And we're going to tuck in these edges. Push those in, tuck them in, seal them as best we can. Push this side in. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I can't even begin to describe all oh, that pesto, olive oil. Oh, already smells delicious. I'm gonna push mine in a little bit more just because my bread pan is not quite that big. 
what I'm going to do is flip this over. So if you're, especially if you're having trouble If you're having trouble and yours is like, you know, stuff is leaking out, just flip it over like this. Kind of press it on the counter there. Get rid of that air pocket. All right, so far so good. Now, what we are going to do. Oh, there's my oven is preheated. I have my oven preheating. Of course, this does have to rise again, but I want to go ahead and get my oven going. So. We're gonna take a knife. And I believe she cut all the way through hers, but then she had to pinch the top end together. So I'm not gonna cut quite to the end there. I don't know if this is good. I guess so. I'm using the serrated knife because I thought it might work better. Cutting all the way through to this end. Okay. Like I said, I did not cut this very top piece. That makes it easier so you don't have to pinch this top piece together. And now we are going to take our beautiful bread loaf and we're gonna twist it on top of itself and twist it. And maybe, let's see, let's see. I'm not happy with that. <laughs> Let me see, I wanna twist it and to get a little tighter twist in there. And yes, this is messy, but it's going to be worth it. Okay. Okay, so we have our bread twisted. Now I'm going to see if I can get this in here without totally making a huge disastrous mess there. I'm just going to tuck this in, make sure that's in there just so-so which I think is pretty good. So, like I said, I wish I had a little bigger pan. I don't know if my phone just went dim on me. It says I'm on low battery and I might have accidentally hit conserve power. So I apologize if the color now is dimmed, but I will fix that. But this is what it looks like now. Beautiful. I'm gonna let this rise. I'm gonna cover this again, put it on my stove that's preheating or it's already preheated. So I'm gonna put it on that warm place, let it rise for another 30 minutes. Then I'm gonna bake it at 400 degrees. I think for about a half an hour, and then I'm gonna show you what this looks like when it comes out. I just pulled this out of the oven and it smells so good. And it is gorgeous. Now I'm sitting here thinking, why have I waited so long to make this recipe? Oh my gosh, beautiful. And you guys, honestly, I mean, you saw me make it. It was not difficult to make. Oh my goodness, this is beautiful. So I am gonna serve this up. I made, this is some stuffed uh, spinach and ricotta stuffed pasta raviolis and I made a homemade Alfredo sauce. If you've never made a homemade Alfredo sauce, you need to do it. It's like five ingredients, it's so simple to make. So I'm gonna have my bread with this pasta and enjoy this. I really dinner. hope this inspired you guys to try this recipe was so easy I know it's gonna be so delicious and it is New Year's Eve as I'm filming this I hope you all by the time you see this it will already be the new year but I hope you all are are having and have had a very safe wonderful new year and thank you so much for spending this time with me and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video bye